welcome back. I'm gonna pick out some cool art from the Discord community and critique it. There's a link in the description if you wanna also be part of the commu cool community. Let's see what we can do with this Goku by Yote. The file compression on this is pretty rough. Remember to export stuff as a PNG, not a JPEG. I shrunk it and I think it's good enough now to work with for a critique. Based on these giant eyebrows, I think it's Super Saiyan 3. So I'm just looking at some references and man, I love the shading you got here in the hair. However, it kind of goes to pink, which is which is fine. It's pretty cool, but it kind of looks more like, I don't know, in, in these DBZ pictures, it kind of looks more like it goes towards like orange. However, it is kind of smart to make this pink so that way it's not the same orange as his clothes, you know? It creates uh, the uh, differentiation there. But maybe, you know, what I would do is I would maybe make this darker. <clears throat> so even though you're shading here, and I like the hue shifting. So hue shifting is when you shade and you move this slider here and you don't just make the color darker, but you also change what color it is. So for example, here you went towards red, which is fine, but maybe you went too far red. I would probably um, do something uh, a little bit more orange. Also, I can tell that it's not really low enough. So if we grab this pink, I think it should be like somewhere over here, a little bit lower. Okay, that maybe that's too low. But the point is, I think this pink, even though I do like the hue shifting, it still kind of looks a little bit too bright. So I'd probably make that a little bit darker. So yeah, maybe I would make this a little bit darker. Something like that. All right. I like that the outline's only on Goku's body. Personally, I would have also probably put it put it on the hair. Something you can also do if you don't want to put outline on the hair is just have the outline be darker near the bottom. So here, you know, we can kind of um, have the outline color uh, just like change over over the span of the. So the outline can get lighter, you know, from here to here. That's not that's not the best transition here. Maybe I think, uh, maybe uh, something like that. But, but I think you get it. <clears throat> and then, and then the body looks the body looks great. However, um, I think when I shrunk it, there, a couple of extra pixels got added here and there. Uh, uh, but, um, so like maybe this one should go away. And here, it kind of looks like there might be too many. Hmm. I don't know, maybe that one. But I probably would shade the chin a little bit darker. You don't have to go like black there, but I do think that, you know, it would kind of look better if, if Goku did have a jaw because it's, it's protruding, you know? So when stuff's protruding, you want to give it an outline. And another example, this is, I don't need to do this here, but I'm just giving you another example, would be maybe down here and here. And just those two spots, uh, you, you see what it did there? It made it look like it's like uh, sticking, sticking out a little bit, a little bit more. And so a couple other, uh, one other, so maybe one other spot that I would add an outline would be like around the head here. Just to help separate the hair and his head because the colors are kind of similar. They're, they're not really that far apart. Another way to do it would just would be to just add a little bit more shading uh, in that area, you know, something like this. So that way um, <laughs> that doesn't look too great, but you get, <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So for the eyes, Goku's eyes look like they're blue, I guess, <clears throat> but there's like white in the eyes and he's still got like a pupil or whatever. And so I know in pixel art, it's kind of tough, but I would still go and add, uh, add white, maybe like around the edges here or something like that, just because it would look more like he has a, a, a pupil. And if not white, then I would give the eye probably um, sort of like an outline, something like this, maybe. Uh, just to make the eyes stand out more from the rest of the face. You know what I'm saying? All right, how about this one by Ludwig? All right, I'm just gonna add a background. Mm, let's find a better color. How about, how about maybe blue would look good. Yeah, all right. The lighting on this is fantastic. You can tell that the light's coming from above with this shading down here. 
so obviously you know you would probably have a, a shadow down here oh i need to change the change the size the pixel density this is how i do it look one two three three pixels fit into that and then i go to sprite sprite size and now here i can just divide it by three and that should get me about the right size let's see yeah see that <laughs> that's how i do it dude so i mean overall this is pretty good but just some super quick minor tiny little critiques is here there's not really a transition in this color so i would go in and uh, do something like that and then up here since there's a shadow here look if it, there's a shadow here there should be a shadow on the outline there too you know something like uh something like something like this you get it you know see what i mean and then with these uh little gems over here on the body if you wanted to make them pop even more <clears throat> then you could shade uh like one side of them like this i probably wouldn't use black but hold on let me see uh, let me get something in between but i would use a darker color something like this uh so that way it adds even more of uh of that of that of that lighting makes it look even more like they're they're protruding however maybe what i would do is also even if they're sticking out a lot out of the body i would even add a little bit of this a little bit of this uh shading on uh on that and that'll kind of help them uh look put it here here that'll help them kind of like uh blend blend a little bit more it makes them look like they're sticking out and casting a shadow like if these were really really tall then maybe i would even you know go as far as do something like uh I, I, I'm in, making it excessive now just to make a point you know you could do something like that I think the shadow would actually the lighting's coming from above so the shadow would probably go a little bit more uh, downward like that but um, maybe something like that you know but um, I don't know if we need the shadows to be that hard I would just do a little bit though just to blend it in sometimes um, I like to do that um, all around let's see if we can get a lighter color though um, I'm gonna lower this yeah something like this so just to make stuff look a, a little bit more natural sometimes I like to blend it in like that you see that it kind of just uh, it looks a little bit softer it's uh, it's almost like doing anti-aliasing but now it looks a little bit smoother it looks like it's not on the body but it looks a little bit more like a part of the body if you know what I mean with the tail here the shading might be a little bit too harsh like the, the transition from here to here it's kind of harsh i see that you added this pixel for like an in-between but i would probably make this like even even bigger to to smooth it smooth it out a little bit more you know and uh and with this color here instead of just having like this and this section be shaded this part of the leg is also round so there's an opportunity to on both sides put this color and now that whole leg looks rounder and look if we use one even if we use this color we can smooth it even further and now this leg has even more form than it did before you see how how that looks like rounder now and with this tail here i think that a good chunk of it uh like this upper part could have been uh, a different color like this to also make it look like uh it's a little bit more round and this dark color here oops maybe just just in the corners of, of this this is like one of the quickest ways to shade is just right next to the outline you put a bit of a darker color and it kind of makes it look like there's a, a little bit more shading you know what i mean and now you can see where using a darker color on these gems here would come in useful because when you have that shaded color there these two colors are similar enough that it doesn't create enough contrast to make one pop from the other now I think there's a lot of contrast here in the head and that's pretty great but if stuff gets really um, busy like this sometimes people they just don't they don't want to think hard and try to figure it out what they're looking at so um, you got to be careful with putting too much contrast everywhere and I think I'm going to I'm going to use the fill tool and um, what you can do is you can pick a section like uh, this head here and now if I use the fill tool it won't uh affect other areas of the canvas you know what i'm saying so this color right here i think we need to make it a little bit lighter and now i'm going to press f and i'm going to turn contiguous off and when i fill this i think it let me see let me, let, me, let, me, let me make sure yeah there we go when i fill this it affected all the colors in that area it looks like there was some in the eye as well that's the 
kind of the issue with reusing colors. But actually, I can take the selection tool, and I think you can do like an inverse selection, but whatever, I'm, I'm not gonna do it right now. So let's make this um, lighter, and just mess around making it lighter, and maybe even lighter, and maybe even lighter. And that gets rid of some of that contrast, and you can already see that Oh man, I should've done it before and after. I didn't do this on another layer. I keep forgetting to do that, I'm so sorry. But now this looks like one piece because when you have really high contrast, like if this was black, you know, lines over here, it starts making it look like you're separating objects. So if this is one big object, you don't want the contrast to actually be too high. I hope those tips helped and don't forget to join the Discord community. I'm a game dev and I'm making a platformer RPG. I'm gonna do the Kickstarter in a few months, so I'd really appreciate it if you followed the project. It's winter and it's cold. I'm restocking the Snorlax hoodies. Panic Pop is my clothing line and I used to work with a bunch of YouTubers. This was like my main thing back in the day, but now I'm focused on game development. And I did, I drew these like t-shirt designs and made these t-shirts up. Then I started doing like drop shipping and stuff, but I think I might get rid of all that drop shipped uh, merch just to make the brand a little bit stronger again, or I don't know, we'll see what I do with this. Oh, there's a bunch of shirts that I'm trying to get rid of. So they're literally free if you just pay for the shipping and handling because I got a ton of boxes in my garage. People said I looked like a drug dealer, so I got rid of the long hair. I'm going to get back to work on The Last Phoenix. I'll see you guys next week. A dev life.